right, so hopefully everyone's here to learn about Iowa, admissions in Iowa, and what degrees to think about in the life sciences. And so uh, we'll, we're going to start out with Alanda Hegman, who is from the Office of Admissions, and she'll talk about process, admissions process in terms of the university. How's everyone doing? Good, good. I think I talked to a lot of you guys earlier today, so thank you for stopping by and seeing me. Um, I will preface this with this is going to be a very quick Iowa admissions presentation. Um, who in the room are seniors? Been admitted to Iowa, ready to go? Raise your hands. Okay, just a few. How about juniors? So juniors, sophomores, freshmen, oh, freshmen, awesome. Okay, so for especially sophomores, juniors, if you guys do have more admission related questions, feel free to find me afterward. Um, I do want to just get started. For those of you who are not super familiar with the University of Iowa, to just give you a look at what our students look like at Iowa all together. Pretty soon we're going to go into more detail about biology and their students, but all together we have 31,000 total students at the University of Iowa, 21,000 of which are undergraduate students. So 50-50 from the state of Iowa, um, and then out of state and from other parts of the world. Kind of again, we're going down there. Our first year class this year was 4,600 students, the largest class we've ever had at Iowa, the most diverse and the highest achieving. Our average GPA coming out of high school this year, 3.63 amongst our first year class. Top 10 states represented at Iowa, Iowa, Illinois, Minnesota, Wisconsin, California, Texas, kind of going on down. So I just want to give you guys a quick overview of what we look like here. Going right into admissions requirements. So Iowa uses something called the Regent Admissions Index Score. How many of you are familiar with the Regent Admissions Index Score? Being from the state of Iowa, most of you have probably at least heard of it. This is what Iowa, Iowa State, and you and I all use to admit students. So you see up here a formula. So these are the different factors we look at. We're going to look at your ACT. We're going to look at your class rank, your high school GPA, and your core classes. Some of you might be sitting there being like, I don't have a class rank. I can't come to Iowa. I'm kidding. Okay. So if you don't have a class rank, we don't use this formula for you because we have no way to compute this formula. So all we're going to do is do an individual review or a holistic review. We're going to still look at the same factors minus the class rank. When we do do the formula for everybody else, you need a 245 or above because you are from the state of Iowa. You're automatically admitted as long as you have the core classes done. So when we talk about core classes, core classes include English, world language, social studies, science, and math. If you guys have questions on those, you can see me afterward. Um, most of you probably will have those done. We don't usually run into many problems. It's typically what you need to graduate from high school. Um, deadline to apply. So for if there are any seniors in here who have not applied, deadline will be April 1st. For juniors, we're anticipating the application will open on August 1st of so this fall. May open sooner. Um, we typically see most of our applications come in between August and October. So if you're kind of looking time frame, time frame wise, that's a really good time to apply. Kind of just moving into a couple other things. Um, some of you who stopped by to see me did grab our scholarship information sheet. Again, for those of you who did not get the chance to see me and grab that, definitely come see me afterward. I'll get that for you. Um, it talks about our merit-based scholarships. Merit-based, solely based off of your GPA and your ACT. How much money we'll be able to give you just because you come to Iowa. So definitely check that out. A couple of other things up here just to mention, FAFSA. So you guys will be hearing a lot about the FAFSA as you go into your junior and senior year. Free application for federal student aid. Encourage students to, to go ahead and submit that. So seniors in the room, submit your FAFSA as soon as possible. Juniors, sophomores, freshmen, that will always come available January 1st of your senior year. Um, kind of going in summer house tuition grant, I do want to spend a little bit of time on this. This is a grant that the University of Iowa offers to all students. So if you enroll in the University of Iowa, after you complete your freshman year, you can take summer classes here for free. So you can pick one summer, take a whole summer's worth of classes for free. Um, you do have to pay your fees for that semester, but your tuition will be waived. So this is a really good grant, again, that we offer all of our students. You can take up to a whole semester's worth of classes at this reduced rate. Also want to brief on housing really quick. Um, so housing applications um, are available in October. So for those of you, again, juniors looking to apply, be looking for this next October to go ahead and apply for housing. All of our housing in Iowa is based on something called living learning communities. So what is a living learning community? 
It's a group of people based around one central idea. That central idea can be health sciences, it can be craft crafting. We have one called Craftastic for people who like to craft. So what this does is just gets you to live around people who are similar to you. You have a common interest with them, hopefully connect with them better and make better friends with them. Um, you also have the opportunity, uh, opportunity at Iowa to actually select the room you live in. So as long as you submit your application, typically right around February 1st, our housing department will contact you in April and say, okay, cool, so these are your living learning community preferences. Here's where they're placed across campus. Go ahead and pick the room you want to live in. So it's similar to picking a seat on an airplane if you guys have ever done that. So if there are any seniors out here who have not yet applied or who have not yet done their housing application, make sure you get that in. This is really kind of for the seniors. Um, if you guys do decide to come to Iowa, just know that this summer is an orientation will be happening. Our orientation dates will open up in March, so you'll be able to sign up for what orientation date you want. Orientation is a day and a half program where you come to campus, register for classes, um, and kind of just get acclimated. So again, that was really, really quick. Um, if you guys ever do have re admissions related questions, know that we are always available for you. Um, come to a campus visit, you know, a more formal, total campus visit, do a tour and that kind of stuff, we would love to have you. So again, just know that we're here and hashtag be black and gold, go Hawks. So then I'll be here afterwards if, if you have particular questions for her about, about admissions. Now what I'll do is talk a little bit about the life sciences here at, at the University of Iowa. And so again, my name is Brad McAllister and I'm in the Department of Biology. And so I'm going to talk mostly from a biology-centric perspective. Um, but firstly, I'll deal with something that we commonly encounter, and that's in response to my asking on what careers are there in the health field. A lot of people are drawn to the life sciences because they want to be a doctor or be a dentist. And so some specific career uh, within the health sciences. And in Iowa, what we have is a whole set of pre-professional programs of study that are not majors. And so if you're pre-med, that's not a major. That's simply a profession of, I intend to go to medical school with that program of study. In pre-med, there would be a set of requirements in terms of what courses that most medical schools want in their applicants. Um, and then you would also be assigned a pre-med advisor that would be separate from your major. And so that pre-professional program applies if you're a pre-med student. Uh, a pre-physician's assistant student, a pre-physical therapy student, a pre-pharmacy student. And so all of those particular programs, which are additional schooling, are not majors in and of themselves. Uh, you ultimately have to choose a major. And we really stress that choose your major for your second option. And so if you're going to go to med school, going to med school, it's not like they say, what was your undergraduate major? And you say dance, and they say, no, you can't come as long as you have those requirements in terms of the coursework that's necessary to go to med school. If you have a major in dance, you have really good grades in those prerequisite courses, you have a really nice score on your MCAT, and you are able to communicate your interest in the medical career you can be accepted into med school with a major in dance. And so ultimately your major should be something that you're passionate about, that you're going to excel at, and potentially maybe your second option if you decide that med school is not part of your future. And so here's just a spectrum of the majors that I regard as the life sciences majors. And so you're really interested in the life sciences, and med school is just one endpoint in terms of that's something that I want to do, but I really want to study in the life sciences in my progression towards that endpoint. Here are the different options at the University of Iowa. Our department, the Department of Biology, 
administers these two uh, sets of majors. It's a biology major. We offer both a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science degree in biology as part of the Department of Biology. And recently, we just had approved a biomedical sciences major that will be offered for the first time in this year. We'll start accepting students into that. I'll say more in a second. We also have life science majors um, throughout the university. And so environmental sciences offers a BA and BS. It's an interdisciplinary program that's not confined within one department in the university. Microbiology is offered by the Department of Microbiology. Each of these are in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, as is Human Physiology. The Bachelor of Science degree is offered by the Health and Human Physiology Department. Um, and then biochemistry, the biochemistry department. And so all of these majors over here are offered by departments that are all within the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and they all have a common general education curriculum as part of that uh, College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. And I did cover this to sort of Actually, I did. And so if you go to the dark side and you want to go to the College of Engineering, um, you know, that's an engineering degree. And so biomedical engineering is offered through the College of Engineering, and that has a set of prerequisite or, or, or a set of, of courses that are part of an engineering degree, part of an engineering program. And so you're going to have a different set of math courses, some introductory engineering courses. Um, that get you to think more like an engineer than, for instance, like a scientist. And so those sort of two different ways of approaching things. Engineering, we fix problems knowing what we know about how things work. And scientists, we discover how things work. Um, so there's sort of two different versions on how you use biological information. But those are the different um, science degrees that you may consider if you're interested in the life sciences having uh, uh, as your endpoint something in the health sciences or something beyond figuring out which of these majors may fit most appropriately with ultimately what your interests are. Is your interest in central area biology or are you really interested in microbes and viruses and human immune system interaction with those organisms or human systems and so anatomy and physiology is the part of biology I'm really drawn to or the chemical aspects of biology is the area I'm drawn to biochemistry being there or the environment. And so that's just a flavor of uh, what's offered outside of our department at the University of Iowa. Our department I would characterize as teaching students how to approach living systems scientifically so that we understand how they work at a genetic level, at a cellular and developmental level, um, at a, at a, and, and how some systems work. We have a very strong emphasis in neurobiology in terms of what our department does in its research programs, and then uh, the evolutionary processes that dictate how these systems change from generation to generation and how they've led to how evolution and processes have led to the biodiversity that we see on our planet now. Our department generally takes a very model organisms based approach to understanding living systems, using model organisms to dissect how things work and applying that more generally to other organisms. So here's just a suite of model organisms uh, that are represented among what we do. This is just a contrast of our Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. Bachelor of Arts is a little bit more flexible. And part of that flexibility in the Bachelor of Arts is also led itself to be incorporated into some five-year programs where you can get a bachelor's degree and a master's degree within five years. So a Bachelor of Arts in Biology combined with a Master of Arts in Teaching is a five-year program. Um, a couple of different options within uh, public health for a five-year program in public health for epidemiology, combining that flexible bachelor BA with uh, courses in public health uh, to get that combined degree. The Bachelor of Science is going to be a little bit more laboratory focused, a little bit more confined, 
But the benefit of the Bachelor of Science degree in biology is we do offer the ability to tailor your degree along these different tracks. And so we have a cell and development track, an evolution track, genetics and biotech track, neurobiology and plant biology track. And so if you have a particular career path in mind, one of these tracks may more closely fit with that career path than the other, and so, or more, one of these areas may interest you more than the other, and so those tracks are available for you to pursue. And mostly what this is going to affect is your coursework in your junior and senior year. What courses are available to you to satisfy the requirements of your major whenever you get to that level of your education freshman, sophomore year, they're very similar in terms of what courses you're taking. We do offer a comprehensive track that's a broad coverage of biology um, uh, that may be appropriate for those students who want to go into education and be broadly uh, educated throughout all of, all of the life sciences. So as I said, we recently uh, obtained approval to offer a biomedical sciences degree that's starting this year. And this is really designed for students that they have an aptitude for science and a passion for, for going on into medical school or into the PhD programs uh, in biomedicine. And what this is, is a program that's a little bit more broad in its scientific distribution in terms of physics, microbiology, biochemistry, a um, little bit less coverage within biology, and so it's going to be a bit more broad throughout the sciences with less intensity within biology in terms of your courses. And this is a program that you have to apply to. Part of that application is writing the statement of purpose that's available on the admissions website um, to enter in that, that statement of purpose. And there are uh, criteria in terms of admission into the program based on high school GPA and ACT scores. And all of this information is on our web page, also available on the admissions page as well. Our honors program is the hallmark of undergraduate research in our department. And next up, I'm going to have a couple of under, or several undergraduates uh, that are some of them participating in undergraduate research, including the honors biology program. And this is a research-based honors a designation in terms of your degree where you write a research pro proposal, work in a lab for at least two semesters, you write a thesis, and then you also give a presentation on that in the seminar. Um, uh, and, and, and so our honors program is, this case, it's honors within biology. There's a separate honors at Iowa program uh, that you may also consider joining. You don't have to do both. You can do one or the other um, as, long, as long as you qualify. And so next up, we have four current students available for you to interrogate. Come on up. Do you guys want to sit or stand? Oh, I think we were thinking to sit. Oh, geez. Four chairs and distribute yourselves along with your names. So that if there are questions directed to you, everyone will know. You don't have to sit under your name. There's a lot of support. So move this way to order yourselves. So this will be your favorite. Oh. So over name, Isaac, Lamar. Of roughly 350 people on a good day. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm a senior here. Uh, my name is Isaac. I'm from Northbrook, Illinois. I went to uh, a very big high school with a graduating class of like 1,200. Um, I'm on the evolutionary biology track. I do honors research here in the Watson lab. Uh, yeah. I'm Nick. Uh, I'm a junior. I'm from a small town just south of Des Moines. Um, I had about 200 in my graduating class, so I'm not going to close to him, so, close. yeah. Hi, I'm Vizula. Um, I am from Marshfield, Wisconsin. Fun fact, my hometown is the center of my state. That's really cool. Um, <laughs> I am a junior, and I'm in biology. I am doing research in the Apple Lab, and I am also part of the Honors Biology Program. 
So I'm going to open up with some questions and then I'll, I'll let you guys add in. Or if you have particular questions as we're going through, be sure and raise your hand um, if you have particular follow-ups. So I'm going to start with Laura. So you're about to graduate <laughs> in the last semester and you're going to graduate with a degree in plant biology and the Bachelor of Science in biology um, in terms of the plant biology track. So did you enter the University of Iowa with that being your end goal and stay on track the entire three and a half years? Absolutely not. Uh, I came to Iowa for their pharmacy program. I was going to do the six year accelerated track in and out. And after my first semester, I decided I wanted to have a life. And I was going to slow it down and graduate in eight years, get my bachelor's in chemistry first, and then go to pharmacy school. And then I was like, eh, not pharmacy. I switched um, to strict on chemistry. Thought I would do drug research and development. And then I got a little lost again and switched to medical lab science. I uh, got a job in one of the labs at the hospital here. Worked there for about six months before I decided I don't want to do that either. So then I took about a semester to be an open major and did some soul searching, went home. Small town, I grew up on a farm, rural Illinois. Um, and I think that just pulled on my heartstrings. So I came back in the fall, or winter, spring semester of my junior year and declared myself a plant biology major. So, so have any of the others of you changed your track as you've gone through or changed your endpoint? in terms of what, how you've pursued your, well, where you are now. Well, I was, uh, I still am, I guess, pre-med, but recently I've decided, uh, really been thinking whether or not I actually want to go to medical school. Um, and I think recently now, just kind of going through all the medical stuff, doing all the, or the pre-med track, doing all those really intense courses. Um, last semester is the first semester that I really got to take a breather and kind of took it easy after doing all the preliminary stuff freshman and sophomore year. And I kind of realized that I sort of like not having to study like hours and hours and hours every day and being able to go out and do so with my friends. So it's kind of the same thing. I decided maybe medical school's not for me. And I also started doing a lot, getting really involved with research. And I realized that I really enjoy the research a lot. I enjoy kind of solving questions that nobody knows the answers to and uh, discovering things, adding to like overall human knowledge. So I think now I'm kind of leaning towards maybe going to grad school getting a PhD. This one, Nick, you, you guys are straight arrows. You haven't changed, wavered. Um, I tried, and uh, I can't think that too well. So <laughs> I'm still on my um, uh, pre-med. I wanted to switch my major to a different major, but um, I was early on, and then I started back with biology more, and so I'm still with biology. I decided to focus into the biology. Uh, I still have my uh, pre-med uh, track, I'm still considering that, but I've also ever since, when you start doing research, you'll kind of realize if you like doing stuff like that, and I've, I've also kind of taken grad school now, so I'm kind of on the wall of what I like to do to like researching and trying to answer questions and do things like that that nobody's done or that nobody knows the answer to, so, but yeah, the only thing I've done is really just add a PhD to the back of my mind if I would like to do that, so. So this one, Nick, and to some extent Isaac, each of you are considering or have considered pre-med as an option. You know, Iowa has a very well-known medical school, a huge hospital, and a veterans hospital, and mercy hospital. You know, what resources have been available to you to really think about developing yourself in terms of your pre-med activities that you've done um, and think about uh, developing yourself in terms of your application towards med school. So what resources have been available or have you found most useful? Okay, there's plenty of resources on campus. There's a few organizations. There's MAPS, which is, um, I don't know what each other stands for, but it's um, a pre-medical group for multi-ethnic students. There's also Medicus, which is another um, pre-medical uh, organization. And those groups are super helpful because they bring in speakers of different um, different types of physicians. They come and speak to you and get a little sense of what they do. They also encourage job shadowing, and so they actually help you with job shadowing and volunteering, just all things on the things on your resume. They even do mock interviews. They even have home study groups for studying for the MCAT. It, that was a big resource, and I use that a lot. Um, and, uh, 
how would you know anything else? I think even just having the, we, I think it's the biggest hospital in Iowa. Um, just having that here is also really nice. You have more opportunities to shadow doctors. Um, they have a huge amount of a huge amount of undergrads volunteer there each semester. I think this semester we had like 200 new undergrads start volunteering there, and that's something that you're not necessarily going to get at another university. And volunteering, even though I might not be considering doing uh, pre-med anymore, it's still like a great thing to do. Like you really do get a lot out of it, and I'd recommend that to all of you to try to volunteer if you can, because it really is kind of a it's it's a nice thing to do, and you feel good about yourself afterwards. I suppose another thing just because. The pre-med track, you're going to take a lot of courses with a lot of the same people at the same time, so I don't know if it's necessarily something they intended, but there's going to be a lot of people that you can form study groups with and things like that, which is nice, especially in the discussion section and stuff like that. So that's kind of nice. So I'll pause at this point. Are there particular questions or follow-ups that anyone has that they want to address? Yes? For the pre-med students, um, why would you choose like biology tracks and not like, chem like chemistry stuff. So. I just liking it or I've just always loved biology. Like I've always thought evolution was like the coolest thing ever. So that's that's why I chose biology. So I chose that because that's what I'm interested in. I didn't choose it because I didn't choose it because that's what I thought would be good for pre med. I chose it because that was what would be good for me. Um, I suppose I I came in as a double major biochem which is a great idea from the sounds of it. Um, but after doing both, uh, I've kind of developed more of a passion for bio, and I decided to focus on that and focus on research, because that takes up quite a bit of time, depending on how involved you decide to get. So that's one good reason why I switched. I mean, I'm still really close to a minor, so I'll probably end up finishing with one, too. So. Um, I think biology one, because out of all of the science that I took in high school, that was the, my most favorite. Um, was biology, and I learned in my high school classes that I really enjoyed the um, visual system, and I really wanted to do more research on that, and then you know, all the optics kind of ran in the brain, so I wanted to focus more, um, I wanted to focus on like, neurobiology, so I couldn't choose human affairs, but I picked biology because it's more, a little bit more broader than just learning about the physiology and just the anatomy of the human body and of the systems. And I just felt that I would have a more complete and holistic view of how things work. Yes. I guess my question is more for Laura. Uh, because you didn't necessarily come in straight forward for biology, uh, how do you feel that that change in major, like, um, were a lot of your uh, Gen Ed's kind of the same? Did you feel like you were behind changing? What was that process like for you? Yes, so luckily a lot of the core requirements for all of my different majors that I had overlapped. Uh, so switching my majors, I'm still going to be graduating in May, uh, which is only after four years of traditional time span here. Um, and like I said, chemistry was kind of my focus when I first came here. Biology, the two introductory biology courses are the core for the chemistry um, degree as well. And there's actually foundations of bio, which Professor um, McAllister teaches, along with other professors. Um, but sitting in that class, I never liked biology in high school. And sitting in foundations of bio, uh, I just remember actually feeling really engaged and really enjoying the material. And I think that kind of helped me start, start shifting over um, and then once I found what I was interested in, it just it kept building. I got I started doing research um, with Dr. Irish in her lab. Um, we went to corn, and uh, so it's just it's been building. I didn't pay her to say that, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take tips. <laughs> Laura, you just spent this winter in India on the study abroad program. Can you tell us something about that? Do it. <laughs> um, whether it's winter or a fall semester or a year abroad, I think it's definitely worth it. I waited all the way until my senior year and I realized I'm graduating May and I still haven't studied abroad and that's something I really wanted to do. And so on a whim, I kind of applied. Uh, winter was the only thing that was going to fit my schedule and still allow me to graduate in May, uh, which is a really big priority for me. 
and I was accepted and I just decided that I was doing it. It was totally worth it. Um, we went with a rather small group, there were 21 of us, and 21 of us for 21 days, perfect amount of time. Um, so if, you're, if you'd be nervous about leaving for a whole semester, one term, probably something to consider. Uh, but every day we were doing something different. We'd start with a lecture and then do something cultural, fun afterwards. Just definitely, um, definitely a good experience. I had to Have any of the others of you done study abroad things? Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, I've been a volunteer ship a lot. So I wasn't, I didn't take a class. It was a medical volunteer ship, a medical volunteer ship that I did in Peru for three weeks. Um, this was my, so my summer, it was a summer right after freshman year college. And um, it was an amazing experience. It actually changed the whole reason why I wanted to become a doctor. And I, it opened up my eyes of the damage that poverty does to those in different countries. And it just really puts your whole life into perspective. And so I really value that experience. Um, I'm actually looking for one in France right now. Um, I'm taking French, and it just seems kind of cool to go spend uh, like six weeks there. And I'm kind of mind went up for that because I think it'd be really cool. And I mean, everybody that's ever done it has always given me positive feedback and strongly recommends doing something like that. So it's, there's always tons of resources available to be able to do that. So <coughs> I guess I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> but my next question is for you. <laughs> you have done a lot of research activities in different labs on campus. Can you say something about sort of how easy it is and what resources you use or what strategies you use to identify um, a laboratory home to do research in? So I worked in three labs here at the university. Um, that wasn't my plan coming in. I wanted to just find one lab and stick with it for all four years and or at least three years starting software and really do research. But um, or get into it with one lab, but that's not how it worked out. Um, basically, to find the first lab, I wanted to work with the summer between freshman and sophomore year, and I just looked at the biology department website, found like five professors who had projects that interested me, emailed all of them. Uh, I met with like two or three of them, and one of them offered me a position, so I went for him for a summer. Uh, and that lab, that just didn't really work out. So after that, the next semester, uh, I met with somebody in the, I think, the biochemistry department, and she gave me a bunch of names of people in biochem to work with. And then I ended up working over in the biochem department across the river with Dr. Streck and his lab working on mitochondrial uh, fission infusion in neuronal cells for about a year and a half. Um, and then I decided that, and then to graduate with honors and also just for personal interest, I decided I wanted to really get back into biology research. and. In this class, I had evolution last semester with Dr. Logston, and I went and I just saw him after class one day, uh, just to introduce myself. And since I'm on the evolutionary track, I wanted to meet a professor who really researched evolution. And he instantly just offered me a position in his lab, and uh, I accepted it, and I started working in his lab this semester. So I think really the main way to, or the best way I think to get a position in somebody's lab is just to email professors, like. They're really just people. Like it's scary when you're a freshman to go in and talk to them, but once you do it a couple times, it's really like it's not scary at all. The professors are like really nice and really want you to work in their lab and get a lot of the experience. If you go in and you're like if you're confident and like know what you want to do, uh, they're always very willing to facilitate you like getting work in their lab or if not in their lab. Whenever, if I emailed somebody and they didn't have a position for me, they would send me back like five names of other people doing similar research to uh, contact. So I think really the main thing is just go see your professors, send people emails, uh, don't be afraid to get out there, and you'll find something. So I'm going to stop asking my questions at this point. So I'll open it up for any more questions from you guys that you may have. Yes. Okay, so I noticed that Nick chose the bachelor Arts, or, sorry, yeah. yeah. And then everyone else chose the science, so I just want to know, like, why you chose that instead of the science one. Um, well, I thought about teaching too for a while, and it, not that it makes a huge difference, but the BA is kind of more of like, an, you get kind of like a flavor for all of the different ones, and that kind of like interested me. But like the lab I work in is genetics, so I get a lot of experience in that, and I learn a lot about genetics at the same time. So. 
I guess it just depends on kind of what you want to do and if you want to like, be more broad or if you want to specify in one specific area. So I guess it's just kind of a personal choice. But for me, I've been able to do just about everything that a BS has been. So. Very good question. Anything else? Well, thank you very much um, for our panelists. We're still my hand. I'll let them stay there because basically we're done. So here's our department website. If we covered anything too fast that you want to get, you should be able to find on the website. Contact information is there. I'm around, several other people around, current students around. If you have questions, uh, grab someone. Admission's right there. Uh, so thank you for coming and have a safe travel home.